22.2. The Endocrine System. Lesson Objectives. List the glands of the endocrine system and their effects. Explain how hormones work by binding to receptors of target cells. Describe feedback mechanisms that regulate hormone secretion. Identify three endocrine system disorders. Vocabulary. Adrenal glands. Endocrine system. Gonads. Hypothalamus. Pancreas, parathyroid glands, pineal gland, pituitary gland, target cell, thyroid gland. Introduction The nervous system isn't the only message relaying system of the human body. The endocrine system also carries messages. The endocrine system is a system of glands that release chemical messenger molecules into the bloodstream. The messenger molecules are hormones. Hormones act slowly compared with the rapid transmission of electrical messages by the nervous system. They must travel through the bloodstream to the cells they affect, and this takes time. On the other hand, because endocrine hormones are released into the bloodstream, they travel throughout the body. As a result, endocrine hormones can affect many cells and have body-wide effects. Glands of the Endocrine System The major glands of the endocrine system are the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the thyroid, the thymus, the pancreas, the adrenal gland, the ovary, and the testes. The glands of the endocrine system are the same in males and females except for the testes which are found only in males and ovaries which are found only in females. Hypothalamus The hypothalamus is actually part of the brain, but it also secretes hormones. Some of its hormones tell the pituitary gland to either secrete or stop secreting its hormones. In this way, the hypothalamus provides a link between the nervous and endocrine systems. The hypothalamus also produces hormones that directly regulate body processes. These hormones travel to the pituitary gland, which stores them until they are needed. The hormones include antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. Antidiuretic hormone stimulates the kidneys to conserve water by producing more concentrated urine. Oxytocin stimulates the contractions of childbirth, among other functions. Pituitary gland. The pea-sized pituitary gland is attached to the hypothalamus by a thin stalk. It consists of two bulb-like lobes. The posterior, back, lobe stores hormones from the hypothalamus. The anterior, front, lobe secretes pituitary hormones. Most pituitary hormones control other endocrine glands. That's why the pituitary is often called the master gland of the endocrine system. Other endocrine glands. Other glands of the endocrine system are described below. The thyroid gland is a large gland in the neck. Thyroid hormones increase the rate of metabolism in cells throughout the body. They control how quickly cells use energy and make proteins. The two parathyroid glands are located behind the thyroid gland. Parathyroid hormone helps keep the level of calcium in the blood within a narrow range. It stimulates bone cells to dissolve calcium in bone matrix and release it into the blood. The pineal gland is a tiny gland located at the base of the brain. It secretes the hormone melatonin. This hormone controls sleep-wake cycles and several other processes. The pancreas is located near the stomach. Its hormones include insulin and glucogen. These two hormones work together to control the level of glucose in the blood. Insulin causes excess blood glucose to be taken up by the liver, which stores the glucose as glycogen. Glucogen stimulates the liver to break down glycogen into glucose and release it back into the blood. The pancreas also secretes digestive enzymes into the digestive tract. The two adrenal glands are located above the kidneys. Each gland has an inner and outer part. The outer part, called the cortex, secretes hormones such as cortisol, which helps the body deal with stress, and aldosterone, which helps regulate the balance of minerals in the body. The inner part of each adrenal gland, called the medulla, secretes fight-or-flight hormones such as adrenaline, which prepare the body to respond to emergencies. For example, adrenaline increases the amount of oxygen and glucose going to the muscles. The gonads secrete sex hormones. The male gonads are called testes. 
they secrete the male sex hormone testosterone. The female gonads are called ovaries. They secrete the female sex hormone estrogen. Sex hormones are involved in the changes of puberty. They also control the production of gametes by the gonads. How Hormones Work Endocrine hormones travel throughout the body in the blood. However, each hormone affects only certain cells, called target cells. A target cell is the type of cell on which a hormone has an effect. A target cell is affected by a particular hormone because it has receptor proteins that are specific to that hormone. A hormone travels through the bloodstream until it finds a target cell with a matching receptor it can bind to. When the hormone binds to a receptor, it causes a change within the cell. Exactly how this works depends on whether the hormone is a steroid hormone or a non-steroid hormone. Steroid Hormones Steroid hormones are made of lipids, such as phospholipids and cholesterol. They are fat-soluble, so they can diffuse across the plasma membrane of target cells and bind with receptors in the cytoplasm of the cell. The steroid hormone and the receptor form a complex that moves into the nucleus and influences the expression of genes. Examples of steroid hormones include cortisol and sex hormones. Non-steroid hormones Non-steroid hormones are made of amino acids. They are not fat-soluble, so they cannot diffuse across the plasma membrane of target cells. Instead, a non-steroid hormone binds to a receptor on the cell membrane. The binding of the hormone triggers an enzyme inside the cell membrane. The enzyme activates another molecule, called the second messenger, which influences processes inside the cell. Most endocrine hormones are non-steroid hormones, including insulin and thyroid hormones. Hormone Regulation – Feedback Mechanisms Hormones control many cell activities, so they are very important for homeostasis. But what controls the hormones themselves? Most hormones are regulated by feedback mechanisms. A feedback mechanism is a loop in which a product feeds back to control its own production. Most hormone feedback mechanisms involve negative feedback loops. Negative feedback keeps the concentration of a hormone within a narrow range. Negative feedback. Negative feedback occurs when a product feeds back to decrease its own production. This type of feedback brings things back to normal whenever they start to become too extreme. The thyroid gland is a good example of this type of regulation. Here's how thyroid regulation works. The hypothalamus secretes thyrotopin-releasing hormone, or TRH. TRH stimulates the pituitary gland to produce thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH. TSH, in turn, stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete its hormones. When the level of thyroid hormones is high enough, the hormones feed back to stop the hypothalamus from secreting TRH and the pituitary from secreting TSH. Without the stimulation of TSH, the thyroid gland stops secreting its hormones. Soon, the level of thyroid hormones starts to fall too low. What do you think happens next? Negative feedback also controls insulin secretion by the pancreas. Positive feedback. Positive feedback occurs when a product feeds back to increase its own production. This causes conditions to become increasingly extreme. An example of positive feedback is milk production by a mother for her baby. As the baby suckles, nerve messages from the nipple cause the pituitary gland to secrete prolactin. Prolactin, in turn, stimulates the mammary glands to produce milk, so the baby suckles more. This causes more prolactin to be secreted and more milk to be produced. This example is one of the few positive feedback mechanisms in the human body. What do you think would happen if milk production by the mammary glands was controlled by negative feedback instead? Endocrine system disorders. Diseases of the endocrine system are relatively common. An endocrine disease usually involves the secretion of too much or not enough hormone. When too much hormone is secreted, it is called hypersecretion. When not enough hormone is secreted, it is called hyposecretion. Hypersecretion. Hypersecretion by an endocrine gland is often caused by a tumor. For example, a tumor of the pituitary gland can cause hypersecretion of growth hormone. If this occurs in childhood, it results in very long arms and legs and abnormally tall stature by adulthood. 
The condition is commonly known as gigantism. Hyposecretion. Destruction of hormone secreting cells of a gland may result in not enough of a hormone being secreted. This occurs in type 1 diabetes. In this case, the body's own immune system attacks and destroys cells of the pancreas that secrete insulin. A person with type 1 diabetes must frequently monitor the level of glucose in the blood. If the level of blood glucose is too high, insulin is injected to bring it under control. If it is too low, a small amount of sugar is consumed. Hormone resistance. In some cases, an endocrine gland secretes a normal amount of hormones, but target cells do not respond to the hormone. Often, this is because target cells have become resistant to the hormone. Type 2 diabetes is an example of this type of endocrine disorder. In type 2 diabetes, body cells do not respond to normal amounts of insulin. As a result, cells do not take up glucose, and the amount of glucose in the blood becomes too high. This type of diabetes is not generally treated with insulin injections. Instead, it is usually treated with medication and diet. Lesson Summary The endocrine system consists of glands that secrete hormones into the bloodstream. It is regulated by a part of the brain called the hypothalamus, which also secretes hormones. The hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland, which is called the master gland, of the endocrine system because its hormones regulate other endocrine glands. Other endocrine glands include the thyroid glands and pancreas. Hormones work by binding to protein receptors either inside target cells or on their plasma membranes. The binding of a steroid hormone forms a hormone receptor complex that affects gene expression in the nucleus of the target cell. The binding of a non-steroid hormone activates a second messenger that affects processes within the target cell. Most hormones are controlled by negative feedback, in which the hormone feeds back to decrease its own production. This type of feedback brings things back to normal whenever they start to become too extreme. Positive feedback is much less common because it causes conditions to become increasingly extreme. Endocrine system disorders usually involve the secretion of too much or not enough hormone. For example, a tumor of the adrenal gland may lead to excessive secretion of growth hormone which causes gigantism. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas does not secrete enough insulin, which causes high levels of glucose in the blood.